So most of you know that I am studying to become a, do I am a doctorate student at Central Baptist Theology Seminary. I'm in my first year, and this will be my third class will be starting next week. I'm really looking forward to completing my first year. My, class, my last class that I just completed was entitled Understanding Others and Self. And it was a counseling class, but I already have a master's degree in counseling. It was over a lot of things that I already knew. But it was a great reviewing and renewing and relearning all the material. The books that we were, we were required to read were amazing. I really enjoyed that course. That 12-week course, Understanding Others and Self, we took several personality tests. And that was on our own personality. And I had done things in the past, but there's a newer test out there which I really have enjoyed. Because it helps us to help with self-care. And how we can help others, but our weakness is helping ourselves. And that helps us to figure out this course on how it was led to, to be able to write and to figure out and how we can be motivated and do a better job for self-care. We had to do a lot of planning and it had to be submitted for grades. And the word that everyone was discussing was balance. That is a normal word in our society. Balance. Every religion discuss balance. Correct? We're always here. We're discussing finding a balance. How to find a better job doing our balance. Religion talks about balance. Teachers talk about balance. Parents discuss balance. The Bible characters, they discuss balance. Even Jesus from Nazareth, he talked about balance. Correct? Everyone, no matter where they're located, finding the balance. People have a hard time with finding the middle, to find their balance. Either they're all the way to the opposite side, or they swing the pendulum the other way. They're too firm, they're too soft-hearted, they're too hot, they're too cold. It's just overwhelming. The world does not understand balance. The Christian world, which you will find, some Christians, they're just, they're, that's all they can think about, the end of the world, the end of the world, where they say and they discuss, and their mind is constantly on the end of the world, and they're freaking out, and they're buying things, because Jesus is going to be coming soon, and blah, 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 blah. So then some Christians on the opposite end of the spectrum think, okay, Jesus is coming in any time. Who cares? I don't need to worry about it. Well, there's not enough balance between the two. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. I'll be discussing more about that later, but first I'd like to discuss this paragraph this morning, or this reading this morning that Reverend Ruthold read. Because Christians show they have their very passionate and they're frustrated. Jesus was frustrated with us, with people in the world, correct? Jesus taught, the lesson that he taught, had, Jesus had good balance. He preached about the future, and at the same time, he preached about the importance. He preached about the importance of leading a present day God in life that included peace and love. His 
compassionate servants. Servants included his hatred for sin and the, the damage sin had done to his creation. His creation is beautiful, and sin and lack of understanding destroyed his creation. So Jesus talked about his frustrations repeatedly. Jesus discussed his kingdom, his kingdom coming here to earth. He discussed about present day evil in the world and corruption and hate. Jesus talked repeatedly several times about how the world is corrupt. And we have to admit that, right? We have a mess. Sometimes we see wonderful, beautiful things that people are sowing with love and peace and understanding and the Christian message and living that Jesus' life has through his actions here on earth that we can see. And sometimes we cannot see that. And Jesus saw it eons ago. And that was so very painful for Jesus to see during that time. When the people heard Jesus talking, this is verse 49. Jesus said, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. Those people, they didn't really understand what Jesus meant. And he, his death and his burial and resurrection and ascension is when they finally underst they understood. The apostles realized that the Son of God, He came, He was born to tell about the end of the world as we know today. There will be a change. Peter, years later, he wrote in 2 Peter 3, verse 3, 1 through 10. And I'm sorry about the words being put up on the screen. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forgot that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you, not, will, but you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a promise. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is patient, patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly as a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. And the very elements themselves will disappear in the fire, and the earth and everything will be found to it will on it will be found to deserve judgment. Fire will consume the universe as we know it. A new earth and a new heaven will take their place. And there will be no disease of sin. 
and there will be no evilness and control, no more oppression, no more discrimination. No more marginalization. No more. No more. Can you imagine? I can't even fathom. Because we have never tasted it. We have never seen it before. We are only familiar with judgment and gossip and backstabbing. Discrimination, oppression, and marginalization. That's all that we are familiar with. That's why I say finding the balance in the middle, right there, is sowing the truth. And the truth is, Jesus did come to share peace, and truth will make people, people fight. They don't want to see the truth, correct? Well, Jesus is discussing this. Jesus was just heartbroken. Because the world, your behavior has destroyed my creation. So very much evil in the world. And Jesus has shown us that for patience. I wish this people, you know, we wish it would the fire be now, but we have to wait until you are baptized, until the baptism. Jesus, in verse 49, was frustrated, and he said, I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But it's good knowing that our Lord and our Savior was mourning the existence of evil in the world. Not only, okay, now do you remember the verse in the Bible? He wept, the shortest verse in the Bible, 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. He looked out and he wept. He saw discrimination, he saw oppression, he saw marginalism, he saw hate. He did not see his truth, his message of salvation and love and peace. He did not see it. He wept 2,000 years ago. And again, Jesus saw, this is not what I intended for people, for my creation. This is not the intent. during that time could have destroyed the world. He really could have. 2,000 years ago, he could have. He could have said, you, all, the whole world, the world is crazy. You don't get it. You don't get it and destroy the world. That would mean no more pain, no more suffering. Terrible things would be happening. Disease, disease death. But that meant our life would be over as well here on earth. Life here on earth is supposed to be amazing, wonderful, peaceful, loving, kind, acceptance, welcoming. It's supposed to be that way. But what happened? What happened? 2,000 years ago, what happened? What happens today? If Jesus destroyed the world and his plan for redemption and making a way for a plan of salvation, Jesus had to be patient and to tolerate. Jesus hated sin, but his love for people was far greater. He was willing to wait for his baptism, his immersion in suffering, in Gethsemane, the cross, his burial, and his resurrection. But he was expecting. 
expressing his frustration, and in verse 50 he says, <coughs> Is this verse 50? I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under. Until it is completed. In other translations, the word the word used is distressed. So all these words mean I have to wait. I have to wait. But Jesus Himself, He suffered. He suffered. Jesus wanted to see us stop fighting over there and over there and for all of us to be able to come together and to discuss and to listen to one another and try to understand and stop judging each other. Stop feeling like we own Jesus and that we can decide who receive, who can receive Jesus and who won't and who has the right to hear or see the gospel not to, or not to see and hear the gospel. Over there and over there, all the fighting that was going on. We hate evil. Because it, it because of the destruction and the damage it causes us and our families. Daughter-in-law will be against mother-in-law, son against father. That is just so heartbreaking. But it is true. It is happening in the world all over. Blaming us. We have caused this. Christians and non-Christians. Both. Neither side is innocent. I wish I could say that we are all perfect, following Christ, living an innocent life, an innocent life of judgment and oppression and discrimination and marginalism and hatred and not having that. Unfortunately. You're all guilty. Jesus felt conflicted with evil and loving people. He feels heartbroken between graciousness and patience. Do you remember the Christmas story? But guess what? Yay. That means snow. But Christmas is only four months away in one week. Can you imagine? Four months and a week left until Christmas. So, 13 weeks. Anyway, the Christmas story, when the angel announced, we have the slide. Do you remember this? The angels announced the long-awaited Messiah and they praise God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men. You see this word? Men. We need to go back one slide. Peace on earth, peace among men, but soon he is well pleased. And that men means people. Isn't that beautiful? That the angels announced that, that the earth, that there would be peace on the earth. Verse 51 says, 
Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No. I tell you, but division. Some people are like, what? I remember that story that the angel said that Jesus was born and to bring peace. And now you say, no, I don't bring peace, I bring division. So that's really confusing. But what he meant was when the incarnate God came to earth, he did come to bring peace on earth. But unfortunately, in this dark and perverse world, his true message, the God incarnate message of salvation in love and peace, it caused division. I think you can imagine why. The truth, his true message caused division in the world. The gift of salvation, which is including love, but that is offered to everyone, everywhere on earth. But unfortunately, there are people who reject the offer. And they resist. They do not want that gift. Maybe some want to be able to save their wealth. I think I don't think you can be wealthy and be a Christian at the same time, which is wrong. I must have my pleasures, and I, I don't want to give those up and be a Christian. That's wrong. I must be able to save my power, my friends, my family, yada, yada, yada. Maybe that is the case. But the gift of salvation is offered to everyone, everywhere. But we have churches and we have Christians who are blocking his gift from the world. Say no, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, come on, yeah, come on. And be welcoming to some but resisting others. Come on, help me, help me block these others. Block all these people. Where did, where did that idea come from? And guess what? Jesus is not happy with us today. Still. The message of peace. into a declaration of war. It's a fact. Truth does not unite people. Truth, his truth divides people. The truth will unite people, yes, if those people want to see and to hear the truth. If people are not wanting to see or wanting to hear the truth, then the truth will cause division and it will die, divide people to separate sides and we will never see a balance. There will be no middle. We will not see it. It causes our hearts to create violence instead of peace and love. Our heart knows how to create and to sow violence through our words, through our actions. When Jesus was talking about the families divided, he was stating that there are no relationships so close that can survive the truth if they don't want the truth. Does that make sense? Any relationship, any relationship, 
you don't want to see or hear the truth, then they're divided. That relationship is divided. And it can be divided very easily. He only comes to people whose hearts are right with God. Make sure that you are evaluating your heart. So what does that mean? All of us, we can do a better job of finding a balance. A better job of I better check, I better do a self-check. Who am I to make decisions? Do I have a right to see and to hear the gospel and the message of salvation and of redemption and of love and peace? Am I the one who am blocking others and saying, okay, come on my side, come on my side, yet resisting and turning away others. Am I the one? Make sure that you are doing a self-evaluation. And I'm guilty of this as well. This is something that I need to do. Maybe it's something I've said, something I've done, that has caused people to stay away and to stay out of church. Possibly, maybe. I hate that thought, but it's definitely possible. I am guilty as well. If we really want to see his truth, we better mean it. We better take the time to sit down and to discuss deeply and get to know and to learn and to figure out. There's no, no one in this room, doctor or not, no one knows everything about our Lord and our Savior. No one. We could be studying for the rest of our lives. So I hope you think, oh, I have enough knowledge. I don't need to continue to learn. I have a right. I'm a Christian. Jesus is in my heart. And I own Jesus. And Jesus is saying, and, and I'm, and I'm Jesus say, no, those people aren't for Jesus. Those people, they don't deserve Jesus. I think we're doing a good job of learning and processing. Our congregation should has evidence of that, correct? People from the street who come in, they came in this morning, I'm glad you're here. People from other countries are here. Who, people who practice different religions are here. I think we're doing a good job to being able to learn and figuring out, am I resisting? Am I owning Jesus and I'm being selfish thinking Jesus is mine and I'm judging other people and rejecting them and not sharing the word of God with them? Am I really working hard to receive and to learn and I not to be able to resist or to help judge other people? I want the Holy Spirit to be able to show, be shown and for my heart to follow and to show love love and peace love and peace and to have peace be able to share with other people who want to know jesus they want to know about redemption and god forbid that we block people from being able to come and to learn and to fellowship and to socialize with our God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, like our song said this morning. Verse 54 and 55. 
Jesus expresses his frustration. Why is it that you can respond to anybody? Did you not? And who was a wide awake last night because of the storm? And I went to sleep at 12.30, and I, I tried to go to sleep at 12.30, and I was wide awake until 3. And I have a granddaughter who is scared to death of storms. So wide awake, but here we are, we survived it. Jesus said, Why is it that you can respond and react to the clouds in the west and the winds from the south and prepare for the upcoming rain and heat that you cannot and do not respond and react to all the Old Testament prophecies? Why can we not, not do that? There are many prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah and his triumphs and the kingdom here on earth, but they don't respond to that. They did not respond to that. Rain, rain is coming. Everybody get ready. Better have some towels prepared in case your house leaks. We know how to do that. But we do not know how to respond to the Old Testament prophecies and the New Testament and the promises of, of God coming and walking here on earth and healing and being able to eat with people and to have other people refusing to eat with. Jesus healed people. Jesus touched people with leprosy. Would we be willing to do that or would we be terrified? Jesus has shown us how to love everyone and why we know how. And so many different things, but we know how to do these different things, but we do not know how to show love. Why? Where did that come from? Why is that? Maybe for the future, where we discuss and we discuss and we discuss. We know that Jesus will come again. He will. And which I'm looking forward to. Maybe today. I hope so. Wouldn't that be fun to be able to go home with our families right now where we would all be ascended into heaven? Wouldn't that be cool? Jesus will be coming soon. Jesus said, I'm here for everyone. And I want you to figure this out. Stop fighting. Stop judging. Stop going to the different sides and try to get the two sides to unite together. You all know how. You know how to prepare for rain. You're ready for pre preparing for storms. You know how to be prepared for Jesus is coming again. How? Showing love, sowing the seeds of gospel, showing peace, sowing all that. To who? To everyone. And where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Can you do that? Can you try? Can you try to do more? Can you try to do more with me as a body of Christ to really analyze ourselves? And this is something that we can do together during church, during Bible study, individually, during your own time together with the Lord, can you ask your heart, ask yourself, am I one who thinks that I own Jesus and that I have a right to say no to people and to say yes to some? Can you do that with me? With me, a 
along with each individual, can we pray for the Holy Spirit to nudge each one of us and ask each other, am I doing a good enough job to share the message, to share the truth? Not our way, not our message, but His message. Is that something that you can do with me? Can you help me pursue? And to hate, make that 97% to feel His love and His peace coming through our words, our expressions. You know how that people, we, we all have facial expressions where we're rolling our eyes and indicating to the other person. Or basically we're judging it. Can we figure out together in DICC, the body of Christ, and our visitors, can we figure out together what can we do better to share the truth? Because if we share the truth of the truth of salvation, of peace and love, and we will not have division. Yes? Can you do that with me? Take this new journey where we figure it out? What can we do better? Again, you're doing an amazing, amazing job. You can just see the fellowship that we here, have here. We're not divided. This is a beautiful example. This is just beautiful. This is Jesus right here. But we need to do more. We are not finished. We need to have more people. Those 97% of people who don't know Jesus, deaf people, we need to figure out how to draw them to come to church. And for us to say, we love you. We want to share the gospel with you. Come. There's no judgment here. Come. Is that something that you can do with me? This is a new journey. A new journey to see what God can do in our lives and how we can do a better job allowing God to come into our lives and to share His love like Jesus. That's what Christ looks like. Amen? Amen. Please pray with me. Creator of heaven and earth, you compare to no one. We thank you that you came and you taught and you preached and you healed and fellowshiped with everyone, everywhere. You even went into Samaria, where Jews were forbidden to go into that country. And you went there and you talked to a woman. Wow. That is the truth that we want to learn right now. Right now, we have committed that our hearts would be open. And not open to just a small way, but for our hearts and our minds to be fully open to receive and to learn and to share with and to take this journey to Israel, Samaria, and to be able to learn how we can do a better job of drawing people in not showing discrimination, not showing this, um, oppression, for all of this behavior to stop and for us to be able to show how we can go and how we can share with a woman from Samaria at the well, just as you did. We pray that the Holy Spirit would be in us, just like you were there in Samaria at that well, talking with that woman and then telling the woman go and share the message. Your sins are forgiven. I pray all of this in the name of Jesus who came and was born God incarnate 
incarnate love we want to be able to show. Amen. Please stand if you're able to receive your message. May God's peace be with you and also with you. Amen.